Hello guys, welcome to Medicare. In this video, I am going to be talking about a very interesting topic that is heart failure. Heart failure, also known as congestive heart failure, is usually a common progressive condition with poor prognosis. Each year in United States, there are about 5 million people who suffer from congestive heart failure or congestive cardiac failure. So, what is congestive heart failure? Congestive heart failure is a situation which occurs when heart is unable to pump blood at a rate which is not sufficient to meet the metabolic demands of a tissue or it can do so at elevated pressures. It is a common end stage of many cardiac diseases. So now I'll tell you what are the causes for congestive heart failure. So usually increase in cardiac work is the main cause of congestive heart failure. So this can happen in valvular diseases or hypertension or it can also be seen in ischemic heart disease that is IHD and other causes for precipitating CHF that is cardiac heart failure are fluid overload, myocardial infarction etc. So I told you that there is increased cardiac work. When there is increased cardiac work there is compromise of several functions. So what does the body do? There are several physiological mechanisms which will maintain the arterial pressure and organ perfusion. So let us have a quick look of them. The first one is Frank Starling mechanism. As I told you fluid overload is one of the causes of CHF. So when there is fluid overload there is increase in the chamber size and according to Frank Starling mechanism when there is increase in chamber size there is increase in initial fiber length. When there is initial fiber length there is increased action between actin and myosin hence there is increased force of contraction. As there is increased force of contraction it can maintain the arterial pressure and organ perfusion. The second point is cardiac hypertrophy or ventricular remodeling. So as I told you earlier increase in work of the heart is one of the precipitating factors of cardiac failure. So when there is increased work there is increased stretch of individual fibers which leads to increase in fiber size of the individual muscle fibers in the heart which is known as hypertrophy that is increase in the size of the cells of the heart. Due to this hypertrophy there is increased force of contraction which will maintain the arterial pressure and the organ perfusion. The third point is noradrenaline release, renin angiotensin system activation and atrial natriuretic peptide synthesis. First, due to noradrenaline release, there is increased sympathetic stimulation which will increase the force of contraction, hence it will maintain the arterial pressure and tissue perfusion. Now, due to RAS activation that is renin angiotensin system activation, there is increase in blood pressure. So, that will maintain the arterial pressure and tissue perfusion. All the three mechanisms I explained to you may be sufficient but there are some degrading effects also like myocyte apoptosis, intracellular accumulation and extracellular matrix deposition. All these factors cumulatively cause further structural and functional damage. So now let's move on to the main topic that is heart failure. Heart failure can be either systolic or diastolic. That is, that is the heart can fail either during contraction or relaxation. I'll tell you in what cases 
the heart failure is systolic and in what cases it is diastolic the heart failure is systolic in ischemic injury valvular disease and ventricular dilatation the heart failure is diastolic in left ventricular hypertrophy in left ventricular hypertrophy due to the hypertrophy there is there is insufficient dilation so there is decrease ventricular filling and there is decrease atrial pressure and organ perfusion diastolic heart failure is also seen in myocardial fibrosis constructive pericarditis and amyloid deposition so now let us discuss about the pathophysiology of congestive cardiac failure a heart failure so heart failure can be a result of pressure overload it can be a result of tropic signals or volume overload so due to all these factors there is increased cardiac work so due to the increase in cardiac work there is increase in wall stress which results in cell stretching which results in hypertrophy so let us discuss hypertrophy in detail so let us discuss the type of hypertrophy which occurs when there is pressure overload when there is pressure overload there are formations of new sarcomeres these sarcomeres are arranged parallel to the old sarcomeres so that there is increase in cross section and there is increase in thickness of the wall whereas when there is volume overload there are formation of new sarcomeres which are arranged in series with the old sarcomeres so there is ventricular dilation which is accompanied by hypertrophy so i'll tell you generally in hypertrophy what happens there is increase in heart size and mass there is increase in protein production there is induction of immediate early genes such as fos jun myc and egri there is induction of fetal gene program and when all these positive things are going on there are some negative things which happens also so that is there are production of abnormal proteins there is fibrosis and there is inadequate vasculature that is when the cardiac size is increasing in hypertrophy so there is increased oxygen demand in order to fulfill this oxygen demand there needs to be more number of capillaries but in case of cardiac hypertrophy there is increase in cardiac size but there is no sufficient increase in the capillary density so there is increase in number of myocytes but no capillaries so that seems to be a problem so as i told you there is hypertrophy of cardiac muscle so this hypertrophy can lead to many harmful changes so the harmful changes are abnormal myocardial metabolism abnormality in calcium handling myocyte apoptosis and gene reprogramming so due to all these harmful changes there is cardiac dysfunction so what at all happens in cardiac dysfunction so cardiac dysfunction can lead to heart failure it can lead to arrhythmias it can lead to neurohormonal stimulation or it can lead to decrease in cardiac output decrease in tissue perfusion it can lead to pulmonary edema or peripheral edema so these are the final complications of the cardiac hypertrophy so now after we have discussed about the pathophysiology of cardiac failure let us discuss the types of heart failure heart failure is usually either left sided or 
right-sided heart failure. The common causes of left-sided heart failure are ischemic heart disease, hypertension, aortic and mitral valve diseases or primary myocardial diseases. Left-sided heart failure is usually the most common one. The most common cause of right-side heart failure is left-side heart failure. The other important cause of right-sided heart failure is core pulmonary. 